All right. And we are going live right now. Um, hey, everybody. How's it going? Uh, welcome to our streaming Sundays. It's usually streaming Saturdays, but I had a, a Zoom wedding to attend yesterday, so I couldn't. Um, had to postpone it last minute. Apologies for that. Uh, I'm Kevin from BFB. I've got Adrian here. As always, we are your hosts, and we're going to talk all about Coinbase um, post IPO a few days now. Talk about if it's a buy, if we would wait, um, and just talk about all the different news around it, like expert analysis, if the executive suite dumped all their shares on us. A lot of juicy stuff to talk about, a lot of valuation stuff. Um, and by the way, if you can hear us, just give us a quick shout out on the live chat. We're going to have that open. We're going to be answering questions, just chatting with you guys. And um, be sure to press live button if you're a little bit behind as well. So let's start off by, let me share my screen real quick. Can you guys hear me all right, by the way? Just let us know in the live chat. Um, I'm going to start by sharing my screen. So check this out. This is the opening day for Coinbase. It popped up to really high, like 430-ish. 428 is what it looks like here. And they had a massive drop all the way down to around... Let's see. Around like the low 300s before climbing back up. And so this has been its short price action so far. NASDAQ actually set a reference price of 250, which was a little bit surprising to me because, um, oh wait, let me flip myself real quick. One sec. There we go. Okay. Because remember, they were trading on FTX, um, which is like a overseas exchange that lets you trade pre-IPO shares. Like there's a market for it so people can start price discovery. That was trading like all the way up to around the 600 levels per share. And so at a reference price of 250 that NASDAQ gave it, it was pretty low. But that gave it like a, a positive first day by going up really high to like the mid 400s per se and then down to the low 300s. It was a huge drop, but still a profit or a gain per se in the eyes of NASDAQ because it gave it such a low reference price. That was, that was quite interesting, by the way. Um, Let's see. But was it a was it actually a low reference price? Because there was, there is some debate about that, right? If they were actually overpriced or even underpriced. Yeah, that's definitely true. Um, but I mean, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at FTX in a bit. But that was showing like a hundred sixty billion market cap in the technically free markets per se, like with non encumbered price discovery um, but this was quite interesting coinbase reached 29 billion if you look at here this right here 29 billion value traded which makes it all-time record alibaba was 25 billion and facebook was 23 billion so the Ooh. highest volume traded ever on first day and it was even more than how, how much Tesla usually trades for, which is super high volume. <laughs> Quite that interesting. That is amazing. And I want to show you this FTX thing, though. Right here. Can you see it? It's loading right now. No. Okay. Not yet. Okay. Right here. Now we have some cards. So... This is their tokenized stock, and they offer trading. Um, like here, can, you can, can trade you Robinhood. It? Can you oh, move it yeah. up a little? Zoom yeah, I out? can. Uh, All right. Right here. My apologies. Yeah, yeah, okay. So FTX is interesting because 
they offer pre-IPO trading. Like you can trade Robinhood before it goes public. And how they do that is like they promise you the ability to like redeem it for actual shares after it goes public. Um, that's like how it's like a prediction market per se. So technically it's like free reign price discovery. But the issue is that like it's not open to US based people and the volume isn't that high. Like I believe volume was in like the millions, but not nearly as big as like 23 billion on the NASDAQ, right? It was in like the low millions in terms of volume trading these pre IPO shares. But my point is look how high it went. They bid up Coinbase to like $643, $643 per share before it launched on the NASDAQ. These FTX traders did. That means that's crazy, right? Yeah, that means that at that highest point, 643 times 261 million shares outstanding is a $168 billion market cap. That was our reference point for Coinbase price. That's what we thought it was going to be at, right? But then it opened much lower and... Well, it went up, only it stopped uh, at around 4.30, right? Yeah, but then it dropped down so heavy. I mean, look at these. Look at this. Um, Huge after how dump. much time was that even? That was like the opening. Since opening? That was like the opening day, essentially. Um, okay, so it was after a couple of hours. Yeah, it was a few hours after opening. It dumped heavy, which really surprised me. And... Um, this we're looking at FTX, right? So NASDAQ opened much lower and then the FTX traders had to dump because they're like, we bid this up to $600 per share and then now it's worth like 300. So they had to dump and, and a lot of FTX traders got wrecked. And so what this kind of tells us is that these, these prediction markets are cool, but they're very inefficient. They're definitely not a good indicator of of what the price is going to be. And this can trade 24-7, right? So it's trading even outside of U.S. market hours. And so the question is, like, how accurate will this be once market opens on Monday? Right. Exactly. So it's actually just fantasy fantasy prices at the moment. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, let's see. So market cap right now is. Let me open this up. So we ended Friday on a, let's say, Coinbase stock. see if you can see this coinbase stock uh yahoo okay so it ended friday here at see this isn't right though this 630 or 63 billion isn't right um it ended at 342 but they have uh, let me zoom out here they have 261.3 million shares outstanding. So that is a market cap of about 88 billion currently at the last traded price on Friday. That's what it's at currently, um, which is not as high as a lot of people said like over 100 billion FTX trader thought it was going to be 160 billion but even at these levels if you can see this did it actually reach 100 billion yes in the, yes in at the 400 hours? okay 400 levels it was it was significantly over 1 billion but if you can see this some traditional finance people got triggered 
because Coinbase is still higher than <laughs> CME Group, than Intercontinental Exchange, London Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, CBOE, CME. It's higher than all of them. You see this? Yes, yes, I can see it. I actually have uh, uh, like a diagram of um, uh, the market caps of these other exchanges compared to Coinbase. Uh -huh. So if you allow me a share screen real quick, let yeah. me see if I can. Go ahead. Uh, Let's see yes. if you can share screen. Here it is. Can you see it? Yes. And... Everyone else can see it yeah. now too. Exactly. So the darker one, that's like the um, uh, the potential uh, uh, extra yeah. valuation yeah. until one hundred billion, and and the the uh, lighter one is the the actual uh, valuation, but it's now at eighty eight, right? Eighty eight. Eighty eight. Yes, exactly. Right, so that's around here. So that's indeed higher than uh, the other ones, CBOE, CME, Got ICE, it. and NASDAQ. Wow, I will stop screen sharing. <laughs> okay, sounds good. <laughs> sounds good. Um, yeah, let me, let me go back to, okay, so this is quite interesting because people said that a lot like who was selling right who was dumping all of their shares and doing that um heavy sell action and this is quite interesting let me see let me know if you guys can see this people were like everyone dumped on us um someone wrote coinbase cfo dumped a hundred percent of his stock cpo dumped 97 percent because this is all public right you can see can you can you see this all right? I think so. Let me, let yeah. Me see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's all public info by the SEC filings and whatnot. So you can see how much people dumped and like um, the former co-founders dumped, the CEO dumped, the president, CFO, director, chief product officer, chief accounting officer. They all dumped and this percentage delta owned like people dumped a lot right and they're like wow they were dumping on us retail which people were just like saying coinbase sucks for doing so but that's actually interesting because that is a misconception and that was like fake news per se um mm. this this is a better analysis everyone was going off of okay so stacy friedman says Great point. Hello from Los Angeles. I I committed FOMO and lost, and they shut down for hours two two days later. Oh dang! Uh, FOMO on buying Coinbase stock or like Bitcoin? I uh, I don't know. That's not what she <laughs> said. I, I I was assuming Coinbase stock actually, but maybe she I can see. add to that. But look, this is what the Wolf of All Street said. So you know this was a direct listing, right? So it's not an IPO. They didn't mint, not mint, but they didn't create new shares to sell to bankers to raise money. They was a direct listing, so it's based on existing shares. And so executives and investors had to sell to create the market. Otherwise, there's like no trading going on, right? And mm -hmm. so the percentages everyone is screaming is... Uh, screaming about are of the shares listed not the shares held so this is coinbase cfo didn't sell 100 percent of her total options package rather 100 percent of the 255,000 she exercised on wednesday per sec change of ownership form she still has around 1.1 million options so that's more reasonable right they didn't sell 100 percent of their shares and be like, peace out, folks. We're dumping on retail. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame them for taking profits anyways, but this was just a wrong read of, and a lot of this was circulating around um, crypto Twitter, per se. So that was quite right. quite funny. Um, yeah. But another interesting thing to... 
Uh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, it's it's fine. It come it, it comes up later. Yeah, I mean, so two big VCs who were part of Coinbase was Union Square Ventures and uh, Entries and Horowitz. So they had a lot of stock too, and they want to like take profits and use it to pay back their limited partners who invested in their funds. Um, and just to like redeploy capital potentially too and whatnot. So they were big winners and big sellers too. They were um, big sellers on in the past few days, right? Taking profits, these big VC funds. Uh, Stacy Friedman says she was indeed talking about Coinbase talk and she added, I know better. <laughs> yeah, a lot of I didn't buy Coinbase on opening day. I wanted to wait and see, um, like I said in my previous video. But yeah, a lot of people did. I know a lot of people who smashed that market buy. And on where the um, on the topic of like who made out big and who's selling potentially, uh, a rapper Nas is uh, making a bank. He was an early investor per se in Coinbase too looking to make a hundred million and so he may be looking to take profits on that too um or already have in the past few days another question but we had not, though yeah. go ahead that's not really known what he's doing with his share yeah exactly this is kind of um speculation but we had this may writes that Coinbase employees know how to hodl. No one is Ooh, selling more than 10% point. under 600. Most people have their deepest tranches laddered from 800 to 2000. That is a super bullish hodl view, <laughs> right? <laughs> that what she's saying is that the employees are not uh, are not the ones to be dumping on the past few days. Since we're in the question of like who's selling, right? Um, so at least not the employees uh, as per her uh, count. Yeah, the employees one. But technically, I think many of them did sell to like diversify and just to take some profits per se because they've been waiting for years for the IPO to do so. Um, so I'm, I'm betting they did. But also, here's another source of selling pressure. Did you see this? Coinbase gives 100 shares each to 1,700 employees, which is like most of their employees, ahead of public listing. So it's like, well, this is the wrong uh, share price, but it's like maybe 30 to 40,000 thank you notes to each worker on top of what they already have. So, so where did those 100 shares come from, from the... Uh not sure from, like the employee the, pool perhaps or somewhere else maybe from the ceo himself <laughs> okay like the owners uh, made a pool or something like that yeah but this is interesting this could be a source of selling pressure too because right now i'm just speculating on like where the selling pressure came from on the opening day but still, those executives did sell quite a substantial amount of shares, right? Yeah, yeah. They needed to do so for there to be some, some trading going on. Mm -hmm. um, someone else who bought. So I want to talk about who bought a lot of shares. Who were the bulls? Who were gobbling up these shares? So Kathy Wood of ARK. This was quite funny. They love Tesla. But... They sold $178 million worth of Tesla shares to buy a lot of Coinbase stock. It's, right, but that, that was not a substantial percentage from their Tesla holdings, right? I believe it was like maybe 20-25% of their Tesla holdings because, because they still hold the majority of their position as far as I know. Yeah, they for sure still hold tesla because that's one of her favorite stocks um and one of the biggest parts of their etf but i'm not sure about the exact numbers but that's just people were just saying that's so funny because um i know people like to 
rail on like Tesla fans, and they're like, "Wow, Kathy uh, ditched y'all for Coinbase, you know? <laughs> Ditch the Tesla fans for Coinbase." Yeah, it, it looks funny, yeah. But if you know that it's not the majority of their position, it's actually not unreasonable, right? Because she does see quite some uh, upward potential in the long term for for Coinbase as well. So yeah, exactly. And Alvin, makes sense to do so. Uh, just catching up on some live chat, Alvin. You're exactly right. Direct listing. Um, free money for Coinbase. Yeah, I. I mean, heck, if I got like 30k. As a thank you bonus, I would sell that and hold the rest, right? So that's what I'm thinking. And one interesting thing, so Kathy and other fund managers, they are bullish and they bought a lot of Coinbase. Um, but what about crypto investors though? What about you guys watching? And let me pull this up. This was a thread in our Facebook group when I asked people uh, what they were going to do in... Wait, is it loading? Okay. Can you see this? Yeah, you guys can see yes. this. Okay. So this was a few days ago. Coinbase IPO, what are y'all doing? Some people are buying. Some people are going to buy Bitcoin instead. Some people think it's overvalued. Some people says insiders dump. Uh, let's see what else. What's, some people want to buy. Not worth it. Um, whatever amount you're thinking of putting into Coinbase, put it into Bitcoin instead. Much higher returns. That is an interesting and common thread that we've seen around among crypto investors in terms of whether or not um, they should buy uh, Coinbase shares or crypto instead. Yeah, I've heard other an analysts agree with that too. Like people that are already in uh, crypto investing themselves probably are not going to be the most uh, uh, en enthusiastic buyers of uh, Coinbase shares, right? Yeah, exactly. It's it's more the people on the sidelines in traditional legacy finance that uh, that see a way to to dip their toes in the, the cryptocurrency market. So in this way, some other people wrote, "Don't get drawn into this hype." I bought it at 400, now it's 337 and still falling. Oui. Someone says, why would anybody put a penny into this when the entire crypto market is moving at such a significant faster pace with so many altcoins generating returns? Makes zero sense. And I was like, well, Coinbase at least generates cash flow, right? Technically speaking. <laughs> um, right. Someone says, don't enter until 50% correction. That seems like a lot. I don't and, know if it's going to be. And, and not only that, you're actually officially a part owner of Coinbase when you have Coinbase shares, which is absolutely not the case if you have some token, right? Yeah, exactly. That's another significant difference between real shares and, and yeah, any, any kind of token. You know, they were going to, they were wanting to do tokenized shares um, for Coinbase, but this too much regulatory issues so they just stuck with the traditional um traditional one instead but yeah let me see so um a lot of other fund managers like their profits and like the dominance in the crypto industry so we're going to touch a little bit more on like fund manager analysis and price targets for coinbase shares in a bit um, but that's going to help us answer the question, what will happen price-wise, right, with Coinbase next? What is the price outlook? And let's take a look at some bullish arguments and bearish arguments, too. What? Wait one sec. Why is this? Okay, so... Direct listings, right? This is what um, we were talking about here. And one sec. So three other high-flying stocks that did direct listings that we can compare Coinbase to 
were Spotify, Slack, and Palantir, right? And they done really well after direct listing. But initially after direct listing, um, it's been a while, but this is like what happened in the beginning days, right? Look at this huge dump of Palantir. Exactly. And then it's gone up a lot since then, but we're just looking at the beginning days. This is uh, Spotify. Look at that huge those, dump. Those are daily charts? These are hourly the charts from chart. day one. This is day one. Okay. And this is Slack. So this was uh, really like indicative of how Coinbase played out, right? This Grogu was like, I would stay away from Coinbase on day one. And turns out right. that he or she, I can't even tell in this, was indeed right in their call. Actually, Tone Base has like uh, his own rule of thumb when it comes to IPOs. What's that, Tone? What's his, that? His, his rule is never ever buy an IPO or direct listing. In this case, that's uh, more or less the same thing. Uh, he says not until the stock has gone 50% below its highest price on the day of listing. And it can also be uh, the opening price, 50% of opening price. So if it's somewhere between that, that's like the zone that he is looking to enter into stocks that have gone uh, 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 through IPO. That makes sense. Look at Palantir, though. This is post-IPO, right? Because they IPO'd Q4 of last year, and they went high afterwards like tripled or quadrupled <laughs> that's that's pretty uh eventually from the lowest point from its lowest exactly. point exactly um yeah. yeah from around day one to now oh wow okay slack has been 2019 ipo and then went down and then back up but still very interesting. Let's see Spotify. Okay, Spotify has about doubled. And Lojo says Roblox. Let's take a look at Roblox. Roblox just happened recently too, right? Hmm, it's gone up. Doubled pretty quickly. I think Coinbase is going to head up first, to be honest. I don't think it's going to fall too much. But, oh, but it just... already went down like 30% from its uh, highest price, right? Highest was about 430-ish. Right. And it's so lowest? About like, let's say 310. 310. Let's see, what is that? That's a 120... Uh, that's a yeah about 30 28 percent 28 percent to be exact and uh so then to 15 would be 50 percent from its highest price but then you would be around 215 dollars dang that's lower than the nasdaq reference i'm not sure it gets that low dude i don't think it gets that low mm. to be honest with you not with the rest not with s p 500 at uh all-time highs and the mar the market frothy right now yeah it's also going to depend the, the, the strange thing that we have to look into is well in that uh in the, the price. future is how it's going to relate to the nasdaq and to the uh, cryptocurrency market because it has both legs in both of them right each leg in both of them exactly exactly that's a great point and when the crypto market sold off yesterday on i mean it coinbase isn't trading on the weekends but ftx is still going and people question if it's a good data point or not but ftx dumped heavy coinbase uh tokenized stock when the crypto markets were, were dumping too 
Like it went down to like two eighty one or something like that, which was insane. Yeah, because today we also had like uh, quite a retraction, I believe, on Bitcoin. Uh, I thought it was not worse than yesterday, though, right? Like or am it's I about already this? in old news. Let's take a look at this again. So, um, one sec. If you can see this. So, yeah. Yesterday, it got down to 282. You see this? 282, yeah. You see this little dump right here? This was yesterday Ooh. along with the uh, Bitcoin dump. Coinbase mm -hmm. tokenized stock was dumping too. But people were like, that's not realistic. It's up again. It's up to like 320 something now. But yeah, you're right. The point is that Coinbase is one leg with NASDAQ, one leg with Bitcoin essentially. Yeah. That's quite interesting. After a year, we can maybe figure out some of the correlations yeah exactly exactly um one thing though is btig this like what is btig i think they're like a fund manager or something like that btig research is an equity research analyst and strategy um group they're like financial analysts and they put they're really bullish they put a 500 hundred dollar price target calls it the gold standard among digital asset exchanges. So that means right now would be a great buy if it's going to be 500. For there, stock, it would definitely be a great buy right now then. Yeah, there are... Depending uh, on its opening, opening price on Monday. Yeah, but also remember Coinbase had... Um, Profits of profits. Where where did I find this? Revenue at Q1 of 2021 was 1.8 billion, and net income around 730 to 800 million. Um. Oops. So, let's see, 800 times 32. Okay, um, so if you do a quick like price to earnings ratio, PE -P ratio, let's say that every quarter this year they roughly get 800 million of profit. So if you do the math, if I'm not mistaken, that should be around a 80 or that assuming 88 billion market cap which is what it is right now that's around a 25 to 30 pe ratio which isn't that unreasonable to be honest like tesla's like a thousand pe ratio or some bs like that uh tesla stock right here yeah look at this pe ratio 1161 it's insane that's like peak bubble or like snowflake. Yeah, that, uh, that, that, that means you have to keep Tesla for a thousand years before you get your money back, right? From earnings. Snowflake PE ratio. Um, snowflake is the one that Warren Buffett bought too. It's the enterprise, enterprise SaaS, but it was like trading ridiculously high over its like sales price to sales so the point is coinbase looks reasonable per this one metric at least 25 to 30 pe ratio like what is facebook at let's see not this facebook by the way i only see part of the screen ah my bad facebook's pe is 30 See, Coinbase is not trading at an unreasonable ratio right now. 
like so so it means that there is maybe some still some room for growth based on pe ratio yeah that means like people are it, it's not like a tesla or a snowflake or a what, what's another one trading out like zoom i believe was it's corrected a bit yeah zoom video is at 146 Oof. way higher than coinbase's right yeah. so in, in some metrics it looks like a fair price right now it looks like a fair buy and it, and it doesn't seem that the at least the next qu this quarter their revenues would be going down i don't see any reason why yeah it, why not until the bear market comes exactly and they make they make revenue on volume too so as long as as long as there's volatility and volume they're good right right although i believe in 2018 they saw their volumes uh go down like 80 percent or something like that yeah that's always a, a worry Here's a bear case. We talked about the bull case. The PE ratio. A lot of people bullish. There's a bear case though. They make most of their money from their fees. And right. they have a lot of competition, right? Robinhood, like other crypto exchanges, banks, Wall Street firms. Are they going to be able to keep up their high fees on us forever? Maybe not. Yeah, because they because they do have a high margin with their yeah on their fees at the moment so. extremely high and, yeah we pay so much fees and a lot of their fees is up to 10 or 11 percent right for coinbase fees uh that's a great question i don't have the exact numbers right now um i mean i mean not on coinbase pro obviously but on the regular exchange it can be up to 10 or 11 percent i've heard I've, I've read somewhere you know what let's take a look let's take a live so, look so, so the, the question is indeed how long can they get away with relatively high fees until there is much more competition on that area um variable fees is this the right? You need to zoom out a little. I yeah, think. this this isn't even the right thing though. Coinbase trading fees. Uh, let's take a look at Coinbase Pro. Okay, that's not the right one. Um, no, because Coinbase Pro definitely has lower fees. Coinbase fees chart. Hmm. Okay, this might be old, but can y'all see this? Sabori also says that Voyager had like around 10% fees built into the bid ask spread. Oh, this That's is how old other, already. Other brokers hide, uh, hide their fees in, in a larger bid and ask spread. Yeah, exactly. But these, this is old, so this is not up to date. Um, but this is Coinbase Pro as of twenty nine, late twenty nine, mid twenty nineteen. Yes, like I already said, on Coinbase Pro the fees are definitely lower. It's it's on Coinbase itself where the fees are relatively higher. Ah, here we go. Coinbase higher fees. Make her take her 0.5 percent but that's still coinbase pro is it yeah okay i guess i can't i can't easily find the regular coinbase fees that's still pretty Probably high though right 0.5 percent uh five times let's say a two thousand dollar order that's 10 bucks for for a one ether trade you're paying 10 bucks in fees trading one ether so yeah. yeah 
that is quite expensive and they won't hopefully they won't be able to keep that up forever for us for our sake um yeah because on fees obviously there there is still a lot of competition possible at least if other exchanges are able to be in the same ballpark in terms of security and liquidity exactly so this is quite bearish though wait let me um make sure that you can see this too okay someone said okay let me scroll down real quick 96 billion people are where is it 18 ah right here stock research firm let me zoom in for you oh are we not showing by the way yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm seeing it on the screen was seeing it on the screen okay but one sec my bad now we don't see you here we are and here you are and here we are okay there we go back to normal um okay right here stock research firm new constructs wrote that competition from companies like kraken gemini and binance will eat into Coinbase's future fee revenue, leading to a race to the bottom, just like stock trading. So they think Coinbase should be valued at 18.9 billion, 81% below its expected market cap. That uh, I saw that is super I... bearish. Like what the heck? I can't see that happening to be honest. But I saw someone else come to a similar conclusion on other metrics let me see if i can quickly find it um they came but he had a different argumentation for that yeah uh, coinbase expected valuation of 100 billion implies that its revenue will be 1.5 times the combined 2020 revenues of two of the most established exchanges in the marketplace namely ICE and NASDAQ and this analyst said that based on this calculation Coinbase's valuation should be closer to also 18.9 billion interesting so he comes to like the same number but based on different metrics and and that who was it that said that uh, trainer and who is that David trainer ah that's the same one yeah it's the same guy from new constructs exactly exactly um so we talked about the bull case for for coin we're looking at the bear case right now and these are some of its own um l listed risks per se i think they're quite interesting like their dependence on offerings that are dependent on crypto asset trading activity is volatile and changes in legislative or regulatory environment regulatory changes ability to diversify right these are all things we know like can they diversify the revenue streams will they be able to sustain during a bear market with lower volumes can they um, hope and pray that the government and regulators won't do anything stupid <laughs> like ban Bitcoin trading or whatever, or put restrictions on that. So these are risks in long term that we'll have to we'll have to see. Yeah, that, but those are risks to the cryptocurrency markets in general, which obviously will also impact Coinbase a lot, as ninety percent, well, maybe even hundred percent of the revenue is depending on. Uh, yeah on the success in the cryptocurrency trading market yeah that's true that's true um one thing by the way that's... Uh, Radu Bansila asked how do you think about GameStop tomorrow 
to be completely honest with you, I have not been following GameStop that closely besides knowing that uh, Roaring Kitty has like $30 million of his GameStop shares. And so he's he's all in, but we're more focused on like crypto, Bitcoin, all the other great coins, right? So not as much GameStop, um, unfortunately. But you know who is loving Coinbase's success is other exchanges like Binance rocketed so much like 10x because I mean they like to think that it's because of their products and services but I think the majority of the reason is because Coinbase is going public at such a high valuation and so like Dan Held um, works for Kraken the biggest shock was 1.8 billion in revenue which makes 100 billion valuation quite sensible and let me show you with you so at 56 million users is they're larger than Robinhood, Cash App and Venmo which are big fintech like financial apps and exchanges are the big money maker what are all the other exchanges worth right Binance is around 80 billion. It's probably different now after the drop. But um, their token went up in value from like 8 billion to 80 billion in the span of a few months. This is how they're kind of priced right now. Kraken is seeking a 20 billion valuation. FTX gave us their, uh, Sam Bankman Fried gave us their financials openly. Put them at roughly 720 million annualized revenue. Uh, revenue multiplier gets about a 10 billion valuation. Their token is worth around 5 billion right now too. They're all doing really well. Like Crypto.com, Huobi, OKX. Um, yeah, they're doing great. Blockchain.com just raised at a 5 billion valuation. So many of these crypto exchanges are uh, just I, being valued so I, I, highly. I believe I read somewhere that the blockchain.com is also um, considering uh, IPO. Really? Yeah. So soon. I thought I thought I read something about that. So you know what's funny though? Um, let's take a look at Binance real quick I thought Binance coin would drop more okay it's market caps at around a 73 billion right now um, let's take a look look at this Binance chart dude this is crazy okay but okay reach high of 600 now it dropped to around 451 so it did correct, um, but I'm thinking that Binance will stay tethered and BNB will stay tethered to Coinbase stock in some way. I don't know the exact ratio or how it's going to move. I think that still has to go through market discovery. But my theory is that BNB will, te will be tethered um, to Coinbase stock just because it's an easy way to think about it. And I bought some Uniswap too, uh, which is a, de a DEX that I use, I like. And I would love to have some FTX coin, but it's a little bit harder for US people to get it. Where's FTX coin? Ah, right here, FTT, at a 5 billion valuation, roughly speaking. Do you guys in the comments, do you, all, do you all have any exchange tokens, Coinbase stock, BNB, FTT, Uni, uh, Huobi token, Coin, KuCoin shares? Let us know in the comments which one you like, which ones you have, if any. Um, some fun stuff, some fun stuff. I know we're wrapping up, but some fun stuff. Did you know that Coinbase gives their employees an NFT, mm. a non-fungible token of their direct listing? And around uh, 1,300 owners 
looks pretty cool. Some people are trolling and trying to sell it for like 100 ether, 200 ether, 40,000 ether <laughs> on auction. People are trying to sell it for fun. So um, how many how many did they uh give out then? Around uh 1300. Thirteen hundred, I see. Right here. Yeah, so they're selling it too. And another funny thing um, surrounding their IPO is, did you see their giveaway? When they started posting this on social media, it looked like such a scam. If you can imagine. Celebrate a chance to win 500k in Bitcoin. You just have to sign up, but this doesn't look that scammy because this is their website. But if you saw the social media posts, like on Twitter, on Facebook, wherever, they're like 500k giveaway in Bitcoin, guys, and it looked because just like all those. Listing. Yeah, yeah, it looked like all those scammers that pop up like, under like Twitter the, comments, and they're like, like "Send the me Telegram one Bitcoin. ICO." Exactly, they're like, "Send me one Bitcoin, I'll send you three. It looked just like those in the in the giveaway. That's so funny. Um, yeah, I mean, that's dang. This was perfect timing. I didn't even know how long these would take, but uh, yeah, that's that's all I had. Um, some general thoughts about Coinbase IPO. Would you buy? I think. For me, I think 300 is a low th low 300s is not a bad level uh, level to get some initially. If it does drop to around the mid 200s, close to like your your level of 50 percent, that would be an amazing buy because I do think it's gonna um, rocket quite a bit with the rest of Nasdaq and Bitcoin both adding fuel to the fire um, in the next few weeks and months like bull market's not over nasdaq is frothy like come on if it's gonna it's gonna rocket in my opinion so for for those who do want to get some stocks maybe not a bad idea to start like buying some at these levels what do you think what are your general thoughts i think so too i mean if you want to buy any stocks, I mean, this is quite the uh, the listing. It's it's quite phenomenal, and like we've seen compared to other companies, they're doing really really well compared to other fintech companies. Exactly. So exactly. At, at, if you get it at a good price, then probably it's 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 going to to be well worth it. I would imagine. But personally. I probably won't buy it. I, I I'd rather buy Bitcoin if I if I have the same <laughs> amount of money. It's probably just buy Bitcoin. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, true. That's true. But the, the 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 only thing is is that it 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 does comply with uh, Warren Buffett's rule. Cash that, flow. Uh, cash flow. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So in that sense, according to Warren Buffett's rules, it's probably better to to buy something like a share like Coinbase, but well, he doesn't like Bitcoin at all. But in that way, yeah, it would be, uh, it, it's probably, a, if you want to have a diversified portfolio, then probably Coinbase isn't, definitely is a, is a good stock to, uh, to consider, in my personal opinion. You know, one thing that would be interesting, though, is during a bear market, let's say Bitcoin drops like 80% or whatever, Right, I could not fathom Coinbase dropping eighty percent, unless, unless, the rest of the stock market or like high high growth tech, also dropped a ton. Yeah, if it coincides, it's 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 not unlikely, especially because if uh, people see the revenues of Coinbase drop the same in a similar fashion as in two thousand eighteen. Then it's definitely not impossible to do so. But if the Nasdaq is still going up 
and only the cryptocurrency market going down, then it's not very likely. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't imagine it just like moving so far away from its peers on on the Nasdaq and like other high growth tech companies. It, it will have a, a larger drop than maybe other stocks would have, but probably not as deep as, as, as Bitcoin could fall. Yeah, I definitely see it as suppressed moves. So like you said, during a bull market, Bitcoin's going to rise higher than coin shares ever would. But during a bear market, Bitcoin's going to drop more than coin shares as well. It's like just stronger volatility just through and through. Yeah. I saw another thing that you wrote down about uh, Coinbase holding like 1 billion in cash. Oh, yeah. I completely forgot about that. Let me see where that is. Um, dang. Where is that? So... Okay, I don't know if I can pull it up right now, but basically Coinbase holds $1 billion in fiat cash. And people were pissed. They're like, why can't you be like MicroStrategy and hold more Bitcoin? I mean, they do hold a lot of Bitcoin, but those are client funds, right? For their own reserves, they hold a ton of cash. And um, people were like, you don't believe in Bitcoin. You should be like MicroStrategy. So, like, Michael Saylor is doing the right move, holding, like, 100% of their reserves in Bitcoin because they truly believe in Bitcoin. This so is it so that they don't hold any Bitcoin in their reserves? They do, but a very small percentage compared to their fiat reserves. Okay, yeah, then you would probably think they're, that they should have some more Bitcoin in reserve, right? Yeah, I mean, okay, so I don't think they should have, like, 100%, honestly, because that's, like, they need to pay people. Um, wait, let me look up the, the tweet. Give me one second, guys. Let me see if I can find this tweet for y'all. Hold, hold 1 billion in fiat. Dang, I can't even... Lojo comments, Metaverse should buy a Coinbase NFT for its crypto voxels virtual machine, lol. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, I can't find it right now, but... Um, yeah, Metaverse, yeah, that's funny. They should do that. One Coinbase employee will be very happy that they got 100 additional ether for that is coinbase the only similar company on the stock market i mean i think so right you can buy voyager but they're more like a small brokerage per se it's, it's not really the same in my eyes um i think coinbase is the only similar company but anyways Thank you guys for joining us sorry it was on sunday next week we will try very hard to do streaming saturdays back for you guys uh me and adrian picking the hottest topics to talk about who knows what's going to be next week it was amazing to have y'all here with us please give us a like please subscribe if you're joining us for the first time we have new videos coming out for you this week about why you shouldn't margin trade potentially about uniswap v3 why it's a game changer potentially about dogecoin some fun updates about dogecoin um, Ethereum has a big potential civil war incoming with the miners and some other stuff. So looking forward to putting out those content for you guys. It was amazing to have you here and uh, peace out. Catch you all next time. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. <laughs>